if there is a God, how could a loving God who Christians tell you loves you unconditionally, right? Right, atheist? Right, Christian, right? How can a loving God who loves you unconditionally, how could he, if God is so loving, how could God allow such suffering? How? Hmm? How can a loving God allow such suffering? Hmm. Isaiah 55 from the authorized version of the scriptures. Verses 5 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord for that. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, <laughs> then your thoughts. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I don't serve God who is like me. Like so many of you out there, especially you Christians. Serve. You serve a God who is like you. What am I, what am I talking about? Psalm 50, verses 16 on verse 21. But unto the wicked, pay attention to this. But unto the wicked, God saith. The wicked, those who reject the true God and the true gospel. You reject the true God, you reject the true, true gospel, you're wicked. Plain as day. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Let, let, let's read that. Let me read that to you again very slowly. But unto the wicked God saith. How does God saith unto you today? Through the authorized version of the scriptures. Through a vessel meet for his use. Through saints who declare unto you the truth. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? What is it with you? What is it with you? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Verse 17. Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. See, verses... 16 and 17 right there denote what? Choice. Choice. Free will. We have discussed free will in depth, which will be for you in the description box. But see, the problem is, unfortunately, you are only as relevant as your latest video. And saints... And unfortunately, my enemies are the ones who will watch a video from beginning to end. That always kills me about my enemies, that they will go through an entire video just so they can find points to attack. That, that's, that, that kills me, but they at least watch it. But anyway, verses 16 and 17 talk about choice. Hmm, let's keep reading. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, 
and hast been partaker with adulterers. Adulterers being with someone other than their spouse. Okay? And when you read in John chapter 10, okay, John chapter 10, all these quotes are from the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Verses 9 on to verse, oh, let's read 12 in John chapter 10. I am the door, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out. What do you mean the redemption of the purchased possession isn't talked about in Scripture? You're uh, willfully ignorant, dear friend, and you're stupid. Okay? Because you're willfully ignorant. But never mind about that. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief! Cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for him the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Let's read verse 13. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. These Christians that are egging you on with God loves you, and say, oh, we're not judging you. They're hirelings. They don't care about you. Back in Psalm 50, verse 18. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and been partaker with adulterers. So a thief boots the door out of the way, and seeks to climb up some other way, avoiding the way of salvation, avoiding the true God, the true gospel. But they want to go up some other way. They boot the door. <laughs> Silly. They boot the door, and they climb up some other way. The door is Jesus Christ. Okay? But see, you have choice. God has given you the truth. You have the truth. Right here, the authorized version. It needs to be rightly divided. But God has given you the truth. God has given you the answers you seek. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord. Because why? They're, they're foolish unto him. Because they're natural, unregenerate. They don't want to hear them. You don't want to hear them. But when someone comes along with something that gratifies your flesh, you're all in. And see, the Lord Jesus Christ, God who is our Father, and the true gospel, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross, okay? That's contrary to this and to you. Unless you got some idiot coming along saying God loves you or just believe and they skip over the necessities. Hmm. But see, thus far, verses 16, 17, and 18 shows us what? That there's a choice being made. A choice being made. We've covered this in depth. Quite in depth. But see, a lot of you don't want to sit there and listen. And that, like I said, that, that boggles my mind. My enemies who would beat me to death with a baseball bat and drive me over with a car in a drunken stupor, okay, uh, they will sit and listen to a two and a half hour video just so they can find something to attack on. That, that's, you, you lost people, you, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Not that, you know, listening to me, God, you know, whatever, but they're doing it to find fault to attack. And they work for the devil themselves. But you, you're enlightened, you are your own God, and yet you don't want to hear it. That, anyway, verse 19, thou givest thy mouth to evil. 
and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. That's the problem. You, most of you, put God, if anything, you put him down here, here's you, but here's God, but most of you put you here and God, like, way down here. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. If God is so loving, why does God allow such suffering? Why? First of all, you're basing that premise off of a falsehood. What do you mean? You're told God loves you unconditionally. Just believe and receive. God loves you. God's not angry at you. That's a lie. That's a lie. And let me tell you. And you know what? This is where I give respect on to some atheists. Because they have enough sense to be like, okay, you're telling me... Your God loves me unconditionally, but he's going to send me to hell to burn forever if I don't believe on him? Okay? That doesn't make sense. You're right, it doesn't because it's not true. Guess what, dear friend? Look at me. Look at me, okay? If you reject the true God, you reject the true gospel. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. Okay? God's love can be found. At Calvary, the cross, which is death. Okay? But if you reject that, God's wrath is for you. Guess what, dear friend? God does not love you unconditionally. He doesn't. If you want the love of God, you have to go to him his way. And when he seals you, because he saves you, okay? God's love is there for you. He cannot deny himself. But if you reject that, God's love is not for you. God does not love you unconditionally. So see, when you say, if God is love, then why is he allow such suffering? You're basing that argument off of that premise, which is incorrect. Which is incorrect. Deuteronomy chapter 5. If you want to follow along, please, don't follow along in the Bible, but in the Scriptures. But um, Deuteronomy chapter 5, just one verse, verse 29. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me. And keep all my commandments always, and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Now God, if he wanted to, he could force you. But see, if love is by coercion, is that love? Every atheist I've asked that very question to have all given the appropriate answer. No, that's not love. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Verses 28 on to verse 33. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. And it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, and after this, the judgment. This, this is not it. This life is not it. You are going to spend eternity in one of two places. With the Lord in heaven, or with your father, the devil in hell. There's no option C. That's it. Okay? How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their capital, our rock, had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? 
For their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital case r. Even our enemies themselves being judges. How many of these Christians have you run into? It's like, dude, you're no different than me. I love it when atheists bring up to me and say to me, it's like, well, aren't Christians supposed to be different? Yeah. But a lot of the Christians that I run into, they're worse than I am. I know. I know. Why is that? For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. The red dragon, Satan, Lucifer, wine, the, wine, the cup of the wine, the cup of wine that's in the harlot's hand, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Revelation chapter 17, which is describing Roman Catholicism. Okay? Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Oh, that they were wise and they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. And as we have just seen in Deuteronomy chapter 5, okay, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29 again, Oh, that there were, oh, that there were such an heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Choice. Choice. Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Verses 10 and verse 16. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Talking about how he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. But for those of us who are saved for our instruction and in righteousness, that means Egypt is the world. And when the Lord saves you, when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name and he saves you. You're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. Okay? But he brought you out to the world. See, that's how we equate that for us today in instruction and righteousness. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. But my people would not hearken to my voice. God wasn't holding a gun to their head to make them do anything. You have a choice. Satan is not holding a gun to your head. Do remember that. You have a choice. God is not holding a loaded gun at your head, dear friend. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust. You want to be your own God? You want to live your life without God? You want to decide what is good and evil? There you go. There you go. There you go. You want to believe the ri ridiculous nonsense of evolution? You want to say, I saw this. Some people say they're like ten genders. What? But my people wouldn't heart would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up onto their own hearts' lusts, and they walked in their own counsels. You are your own gods. You want to be your own god. You want to make your own decisions. You want to decide what is right and wrong. There you go. There it is. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways again. Choice, dear friend. I should have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. Should have. God wants you to choose him willingly, not by force. Because what happens is, are there uh, atheists, if love comes by coercion, it's not true love, is it? Is it? Come on. You, we all know. 
We all know the answer to that. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and out of and with honey out of the rock, Lord Kesar, should I have satisfied him. Matthew chapter twenty three. Matthew chapter twenty three. Verses 37 on verse 39. The Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father speaking. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as an hen gathereth her children under her wings. And ye would not... <laughs> He's not, God's not holding a gun to your head, dear friend. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 3 and verse 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables like evolution. God loves you unconditionally. That you are your own God and that you will be like the Most High. Back to Deuteronomy 32. Back to Deuteronomy 32. Okay? Verses 4 on to verse 6. He is the capital R rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, which lost people and a lot of Christians hate. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. But, 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 how, how can there, how can God allow, shh. You're working off of the premise that God loves you unconditionally. God does not love you unconditionally, dear friend. You reject him. You reject the gospel. You are his enemy. God's wrath is for you. God does not love you. Present tense when you reject him and you reject the gospel. You are basing your argument. Did they have a technical, what is it? False dichotomy, something? I, I, I don't know, whatever. But you're basing your argument off of something that is false to begin with. Please understand that. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. His children, we get spots on us all the time. But see, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanseth us from all sin. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish? Fool says in his heart there is no God. To behave foolish is to behave as if you say in your heart there is no God. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise, and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Look, atheist, and all you lost people and whatever, it doesn't matter what your opinion or thought on this. God created you. God made you. He made you to have fellowship with him. And you can have all your yea hath God said reasoning and warped thinking all you want. The fact is, God made you. Your belief, your thought on that is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It's the fact. God created you. And when you die, you're going to go before him. Your belief on that, on that alone, is irrelevant. And how sad so many of you are going to find out before it is too late. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 and 
verse 12. Listen, okay? Saints will be right away. Brad, you didn't say I know. This isn't for you, brethren. But if you come across an opportunity that you may use this, please do. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 and verse 12. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, not knowing better, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized, identified, unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual capital R rock that followed them, and that capital R rock was Christ. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Jesus Christ, uh, the same of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, one God. Okay, here let me really blow your mind. You're made in the image of God. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. Wrap your head around that one. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Now, these things were written for our examples. All things were, that were written aforetime were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Okay. Lust after either evil things as they did. I want, I want, I want, I will be like the Most High. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, just like your father the devil. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and to rose up to play. Idolatry, a lot of people, right away it's like thinking, okay, a little statue. Idolatry is putting something in the place of God. You know, most of you, you are your own idol because you think you are your own God. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured. And were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples. And they are written for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Psalm 50 once again. Psalm 50, once again, verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Silence. Thou, Father, said, I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Hmm. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? See, now thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. When thou sawest the thief, Thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Loaded, Taurus, 38 special, sudden shot. If there is a God, why does he allow such suffering? God is not doing this to you. God is not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do what is right. He has given us all free will. And mankind in its entirety has chosen, yea, hath God said. So when you come across, why does a loving God, number one, you're going off of a false argument, but why does he allow such suffering? Because this is what you have chosen. I didn't choose this. Man did. Man has chosen to reject God. And unlike some of these disgusting uh, uh, liars who say there are ten genders, we are all mankind. Male and female. 
Why does God allow such suffering? You chose it. And that's all we got to say about that.